In this video, we'll be looking at the pyro solver and the parameters within the simulation tab. I'll go over each parameter one by one with examples demonstrating how each parameter affects the pyro scene. There's a lot to the pyro solver node, and if I can find more time for recording, I may do another video that will go even deeper into the pyro solver node and cover even more parameters in the other tabs. But for this video, I'll only go over the parameters in the simulation tab. This video is part of a mini series on Pyro for beginners. The videos were recorded in chronological order as indicated here from top to bottom, but these videos are very modular and you don't have to watch it in order. So if you're looking for a specific topic, you can just skip to that without watching the others. However, if you are completely new to Pyro simulations, then I would recommend watching it in order. So generally you would have micro solvers set up here to this third input of the pyro solver. So you would have stuff like um, gas turbulence. These micro solvers all set up over here and hooked up to the third input on the pyro solver. And this would manipulate the smoke using these micro solvers. But in this video, I'm gonna keep it simple and only go over the solver options in the pyro solver. So that's in here, the solver itself has a lot of shape here has a lot of options and it has its own dissipate disturbance it has its own disturbance turbulence noise and all these which are which act very similar to the microsolvers but the microsolvers have more options it's now i'm not going to go over every single parameter in the pyro solver just I'm, i picked a few that i thought was uh, very handy to know and i'm going to go over those now, the time scale parameter in the pyro solver speeds up the calculations in the simulation. This will make the smoke simulation appear to move faster. So let's, okay, let's play this first. Gonna make a flip book. The one on the left is time scale set to one. The one on the right is the time scale set to two. So the one on the right is, should be twice as fast. As you can see here, let's okay. Let me just play it first. This is the time scale one. This is time scale two. I don't know if you can tell, but the one on the right is a lot faster. So let's take a look at the last frame. The last frame of uh, the one on the left at 113, the volume starts to disappear. So it starts to disappear right at this frame the one on the right at frame 81 it's almost all gone the smoke is com almost completely gone so it, it's it's and actually going a lot faster because this time scale was set to two and the one on the left is set to time scale one so it, it does move a lot faster it's a larger explosion too Everything moves a lot faster. The one, this one, it slowly dissipates. I'm gonna switch this back to one, which is the default. The temperature diffusion blurs the smoke so that it, it'll look like the smoke is fanning out or spreading out more thinly. So let's increase this to, I don't know, 10. Let's give it a try. So you can see that it, it expands like a flower. Blows all the way as a flower. I'm going to change this back to the default. Now cooling rate lowers the temperature of the smoke. So this will implicitly affect the smoke. So let's lower the cooling rate. The one on the left has a cooling rate of 0 0.75 which is the default value the one on the right has a cooling rate of 0. Point, sorry, uh, 0 0.05 so a significantly smaller value for the cooling rate now cooling rate lowers the temperature of the smoke so lower the temperature that but we have a smaller value for the cooling rate which results in a higher temperature i hope that makes sense because the smaller the number of the cooling rate so we're cooling it a lot smaller lost less that means it's higher temperature so the one on the left is the default 
So we can use that as reference. Let me just play it. I'll just play this. Okay, let me just put this on frame 100. And here, I'll just go here to frame 100. So you can see that the one on the right with a smaller cooling rate, which means overall higher temperature, it's burned out faster. If we go here. I don't know if you can see at the beginning here. This has a thicker ball that sticks around for the bottom here. It has a thicker ball that sticks around a lot longer throughout the whole animation until it starts to really thin out at the near end over here. As opposed to the one on the right with the lower cooling rate, the ball doesn't stick around. That, that puff takes out almost everything. That puff right here. And it thins out very, it makes this bottom part really thin really a lot with that, it goes up with that puff of smoke. And this dissipates almost instantly. Everything gets carried up. As opposed to the one, or default one, it slowly dissipates. So the cooling, with the lower cooling rate, it increases the overall temperature and I believe the combustion is burning more. When a fire runs out of some, runs out of things to burn, it will eventually put itself out. Okay, I'm just gonna revert the values back to default for the cooling rate. Now, uh, the viscosity is just how it sounds. It'll make the smoke flow uh, flow together more like fluid. If you lower the viscosity, the smoke becomes more chaotic due to less uniform motion. On the left is default values. So that has viscosity of zero as a uh, default. The one on the right has the D, uh, viscosity I set to 10. So we can use to compare. So the one on the right has higher viscosity. And as you can see here, in fact, you can even just stop the flip sim here because i think it's enough you you can see the point this is very uniform with higher viscosity it's very uniform it's not as interesting either because it just moves together the whole smoke moves together all at once we lost all that noise that sort of gives it that detail that fanning out detail those little fins that get spread out here all that interesting detail we've lost it viscosity moves makes the smoke makes the smoke move like water just gonna close this so i'm gonna revert this back to default now buoyancy the buoyancy lift is the strength that the smoke will get pushed by the force that is applied by the buoyancy direction so these two parameters are tightly linked the buoyancy direction defines the direction in which the smoke will get pushed towards throughout uh, the whole simulation. And what is the strength uh, that the, we push the smoke towards? That's defined by the buoyancy lift. So as an example, I'm just going to make this go the opposite direction, just for demonstration purposes. And I'm going to pump this up to like 15. So the one on the left is the default values. And the buoyancy lift was, for default value, it was set to 5 for the buoyancy lift. And the buoyancy direction was just set to the up position, the up direction. As opposed to the one on the right, I have set the buoyancy lift to 15 and the buoyancy direction to negative 1. So it's going downwards. I also had to increase the bounds on the bottom uh, and pull it lower so it wouldn't the, the smoke wouldn't get cut off so let's play this so this is the default this is i'm just going to time it just right okay so it's pushing it downwards which could be a nice effect this reminds me of one of those magic shows where they have a puff of smoke and they disappear through the ground uh, a character disappearing act the smoke goes downwards and it spreads out i kind of like that so the buoyancy lift and buoyancy direction defines the general force that gets applied to the smoke simulation throughout the entire simulation. So I'm going to revert the values for the buoyancy lift and buoyancy direction. Revert it back to the default value. Normally I would show you a quick preview for the next video, but the next video is still working in progress. 
This pyro series took a lot longer than I expected, and there's so much more I want to cover. As mentioned at the beginning, I want to cover more parameters in the Pyro Solver, and I really wanted to show you how you can use Houdini's 3D viewport and render high quality volumes straight out of the flipbook. I was amazed at the quality I got right from the viewport. It's good enough for production quality. The reason why I was so amazed by this is because it's so fast. No need for Mantra, no need for Redshift, and no need to export it to Blender. Just use rendering it out right out of the viewport. Thank you for watching and sticking to the end.